For this part of the video, you will need the add-on called Blender Kit. And once it's installed, just type PL in the search bar and download the black plastic material. Just drag and drop it onto the wheel arches and we're gonna reduce that noise scale so it's less apparent. And then we're gonna apply it to our fenders. So just go into edit mode and select a loop cut and just press Ctrl plus to enlarge that selection until you have all the fenders selected. Just assign their black plastic material by creating a new material slot. And just like that, assign, perfect. Let's do this for the front. We're just gonna repeat this process, Control plus multiple times, then assign it. And feel free to try different things. For example, if you want to um, have a black hood, then you can try to just paint your hood in black, try different uh, graphic elements in black or just another color. Res really just be creative and don't necessarily try to copy what I'm doing. Although I think it's a very classic um, design that I'm going for with their, the colors at the moment. All right, we're gonna move to this part for a new material. So we'll select this edge loop and then create a new material slot and assign a new material to it. We're gonna go into the solidify properties and we're gonna reduce that material offset to zero. So on that new material, reduce roughness to zero and metallic to one and you have a chrome material now. A pretty basic one at that, but it will do the trick. So rename it chrome or whatever name you want to give it. All right, for this part, I think it's gonna be, that's it. All right, new part. Now we're gonna just fraction our base mesh. So in edit mode, we're just gonna rename our base mesh. Same for the wheel arch. Just try to name your objects into a coherent. <laughs> um, Okay, select your base mesh, then we're gonna go to the modifiers. Just unfold that and we're gonna crank it to four, disable the visibility of the solidify. Then we're gonna duplicate using shift D. Then we're gonna hide one of them and rename the new one, the unhidden one, panels or car or whatever. Now, turn down the subdiv to two then um, make sure that so if I set to only rim, then turn it turn its visibility on. Sorry. After that, what you're gonna do is set the target of the shrink wrap modifier. Well, we're gonna create a vertex group before, so just create a vertex group and assign all vertices to it. And you can just rename it shrink wrapped parts or whatever. Doesn't really matter. So assign all your vertices to it, and then go into the shrink wrap modifier, just assign this group to your modifier and select the base mesh, which we hid in the renders and viewport. And now your model is shrink wrapped and you can start creating the panels. Now what I'm gonna do is select by material. So I'm just gonna select all the black plastic or all chrome parts and just separate by selection. So we have new parts and then we're gonna fraction them even more later on. Now let me move this up because it's a bit, uh, it's not straight basically. And I forgot to tell you, but uh, now when you want to make changes like this, you need to edit the base mesh as well. And if your PC is not powerful enough, just turn down the subdivision surface temporarily on the base mesh to like one or two, doesn't really matter. And do your changes, then just turn it up again. I'm just gonna slide this here right there and hide the base mesh to return to normal so yeah select all the plastic parts and just separate them by selection and then 
we're gonna select that plastic part and just add a loop cut over here on the bumper to just reduce that uh, panel gap that was created by separating them. Same here, it's a bit ugly, so let's just fix that. You can just remove it from the vertex group too, since it's not very uh, a very consequential part to be removed from. Okay, so back into the car paint, we're gonna select this these faces here, and just make sure to select the ones on the like the edge here. I'm gonna hide them uh, by pressing H. Sorry, forgot to mention that. Okay, let's take a look at the front here. I'm just gonna select this face and hide it. Then with L, I'm gonna se select all of it and then press Alt H to unhide those faces that we made uh, hidden and then separate those. All right, now we need to create a loop cut. I'm just gonna merge that with auto merge on. Merge this here to have a loop cut that runs across the length here. So I'm just redirecting the edge flow here. So we have a loop that uh, follows the contour of it. So just slide this here. And to get rid of that ugly gap, I'm just gonna add an edge loop right here. I'm just gonna place those before. Same for here. We may need one over there, just like that. And the advantage of base mesh is basically that at this stage, we don't really care anymore about topology. If our base mesh is correct, then our panels can be very ugly. They could, I believe, even have a lot of triangles and maybe end guns, and they would still look super good. Be because they're projected onto a high poly uh, model that is made with quads and proper edge flow and all that. So if you have vents to create, I would just remove certain parts from that shrink wrapped group and just uh, edit it from there like a regular mesh. For here, I'm just gonna slide this a bit closer right here. And we're gonna repeat this process for all the panels. You're gonna see it's getting, uh, it will get a lot quicker with experience at the end with time. So I'm just gonna slide this here, add a loop cut there if needed for you. Now this bugs me a tiny bit. Now, let's select the hood. So select those faces and then we're gonna hide them with, um, before that, yeah, hide them. And then we're gonna select this other set of faces. So just like that, uh, control Z, yeah, hide those faces so we have those selected. Okay. Now that looks all right. Let's just delete those. We're not going to need them for now. Select the hood with L, then Alt H, and we're going we're going to separate them. And back into material preview. Now this edge here needs to be tightened. So let's just add a loop cut there. And another one here. We're gonna fix this one a bit later since it looks a bit janky. Like you could run with it, but ideally you want uh, panel gaps that make sense. So let's just add one loop cut here if your model needs it. Let's just merge this over there. Okay, so delete those vertices, or not, don't, don't delete it, sorry. Just slide them upward to create the new windshield area. Just gonna slide this over there. 
Now for those, let's just tighten this here. Push that to the side over here. So yeah, we just need to redirect the edge flow. So delete these faces, this and this, okay? Then we're gonna add a loop cut in, this, in both of those direction and just face this area. So now we have a loop that follows the contour of our roof. Now this still bugs me a tiny bit, so I'm just gonna rework that. Now let's move this in. You gotta be careful to see if it doesn't just bugs with the base mesh. So for example, here I'm just gonna edit the base mesh instead. So I'm gonna go in and just push this in like we did with the final panel, but on the base mesh, so it edits it perfectly. So that's why ideally you want to avoid um, to make too many mistakes on your base mesh, because if you have to jump between your base mesh and the final panel, it's always uh, more time, time consuming than just editing one panel or the base mesh at the beginning. So, okay, now that we have deleted those, Let's just slide them. You can see here that it makes the front pillar a bit glitchy. So I'm just gonna leave them alone for now. Extrude them once, add loop cut over here and fill this in, just like that. All right, not too bad. Now select this loop and just tighten this so it's a bit there. Uh... Okay, add loop cut and then select the outer loop and we're just gonna separate it to create a kind of a trim that goes along the, the edge of the roof. Yeah, sorry for that environment. I just used an HDRI and probably forgot to pack resources or something. So yeah, with Blender Kit, you can just select any HDRI. So I'm gonna select this one. Feel free to experiment with them. And yeah, you can see that our SUV is looking pretty damn good, to be honest. Okay, so you can continue spinning around your model for 30 minutes if you want, like I did, or you can just decide to follow me and continue further down. So add loop cut here to make it a bit uh, less round. And we're just gonna continue to split panels. So inside here, we're gonna need to make up the doors, I believe. So I loop cut about in the middle, then select those faces, and we may need to rework them later on if we see that they're too small or if that the shape doesn't work for us. So select those faces, I loop cut if needed. I'm just gonna add one and straighten it on the Y axis and separate those faces. So you can see they're pretty damn small for doors. So let's just move this in as much as we can. And we're we can make more room for them later on. But for now, I want to avoid um, moving too many parts around. So how can we fix this weird glitching? Well, we can just make a loop that runs, that follows the contour of it. So just like this, extrude some vertices, dissolve some, and just fill areas. Until you have a loop like this, that follows the edge of your shape. This will allow you to just add loop cuts in one shot instead of just playing around and uh, trying to make the panel gap look clean. Move this here, slide those there. Same for this, try to make it a bit clean. See how those reflections pass through all the panels perfectly, even if our geometry is not really aligned anymore. So that's the power of base mesh. <laughs> More of shrink wrapping than the base mesh, but yeah. Anyway, let's continue. So I'm just gonna going to try to play with this 
dissolve some uh, faces if needed. Don't spend too much time in this part because we're gonna come back to it to make the door wider in the end. Because I realized that they were way too small for the size of the vehicle. Let's just slide this over there. Add loop cuts here, slide it to cover the mess that we created there. Same for here, just add the loop cut to make the panel look cleaner. Still not very happy with this, so I'm gonna slide it about here. And try to complete with this one instead. Same for the door. Let's just move this down a tiny bit, add a loop cut if needed. And yeah, it doesn't need to be perfectly hermetic, like um, the light will not get in anyway, so it would just look black, um, whatever we do. So don't worry too much if your panel isn't like perfectly aligned with the other parts, it's normal. As long as you have a thin line that is black, it's all right. Or no big hole that will just absorb all the light. Now let's hide this and separate this part like we did before with separate selection. Now for the back, I'm doing usually the easiest parts before, like the one that I'm really sure where I want my panel gap to be, because I, I want like a specific line or a specific uh, part to be this color. So usually I try to have um, one material per panel. So for this, we can just retopologize this and get rid of the triangles that we had before. If we add shading errors, it will not get rid of them because it um, follows like the shading of the base mesh, but it will definitely look cleaner and make it easier for us to work on in the future. Let's just add loop cut here and another one here and ta-da, looks quite clean, except for the stretching here, but it can be easily fixed like that. Same for this one up here, we may need to delete this face and retopologize this area. So add loop cut there and face this area like that. You can add a loop cut here. And that looks a bit cleaner. Yes, look at that. Okay, for the front now. What we can do is add a loop cut here to make it a bit sharper. I'm gonna do the same on the base mesh because it doesn't serve anything, any purpose if you do it on the final panel, but not the base mesh as it won't uh, get sharper. 